What is going on guys? Don checking in. Welcome to Mint, where we bring nursing to you. Alright, so today we're going to talk about RAS or the Renin Angiotensin Aldosterone System. So get your notes ready because I'm ready. Let's go. By the way, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Please hit the like and subscribe button because by doing that, it really does help this channel a lot. And you can always change your mind later. So, you guys ready? Let's go. Hi guys, so today we are going to talk about RAS. RAS stands for Renin Angiotensin Aldosterone System. Now, this system has one ultimate goal and that is to increase blood pressure. And for this to happen, a hormone called angiotensin II needs to be made. Angiotensin II is a byproduct of this system that involves three key elements, renin, angiotensin, and aldosterone. Let's talk about how this system works. So the system starts with a stimuli, which is the decrease in blood pressure. The decrease in blood pressure will be sensed by the sympathetic nervous system and the kidneys. When this happens, the kidneys secrete an enzyme called renin. Now this renin alone cannot decrease blood pressure by itself. So what's going to happen is that this renin will interact with a protein called angiotensinogen. This angiotensinogen is actually produced by our liver. So when renin and angiotensinogen meet, renin actually converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Now angiotensin 1 itself cannot increase the blood pressure it needs to be converted to angiotensin 2. So what it does is that it just circulates within the bloodstream until it reaches the lungs. Within the capillaries of the lungs are enzymes called angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE. So by its name converting, ACE actually converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is our byproduct. Angiotensin 2 can increase blood pressure in two ways. One is that it is a potent vasoconstrictor, meaning angiotensin II constrict blood vessels. And when it does, this causes the blood pressure to go up. So think about the blood vessels as a hose with running water. If you squeeze the hose, the pressure goes up. So same goes with the blood pressure. If angiotensin II causes vasoconstriction, which constricts the blood vessels, the blood pressure goes up. Now, the other way for angiotensin II to increase blood pressure has something to do with the neighboring organs of the kidneys these guys over here. These are your adrenal glands. To be more specific, angiotensin II causes the adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone. So the secretion of aldosterone causes an increase in the reabsorption of sodium within the kidneys. So normally, along with water, sodium is being eliminated by the kidneys toward the bladder, and we excrete it by means of urination. But the presence of aldosterone actually increases the sodium to be reabsorbed within the blood vessels. And as the saying goes, wherever sodium goes, water then follows. So when this happens, two things actually occur. One is that there would be an increase in blood volume because of the reabsorption of water within the blood vessels. This concurrently occur with a decrease in the urinary output. So when there is an increase in the blood volume, the blood pressure goes up. So along with vasoconstriction, there's an increase in the volume of water within the blood vessels. So think about it this way. Let's go back to the water hose analogy. Along with the constriction of the blood vessel, there's going to be an increase in the water flow within that hose, meaning it also increases the pressure. That is why angiotensin II play an important role in increasing blood pressure in two ways, vasoconstriction and aldosterone secretion, which ultimately increases blood pressure. So let us review. Everything starts with a decrease in blood pressure, which is perceived by the sympathetic nervous system and the kidneys. The kidneys then secrete renin in the bloodstream. Renin then interacts with angiotensinogen, which is primarily secreted by the liver. Renin then converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 circulates in the bloodstream until it reaches the capillaries of the lungs where angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE is present. Now ACE converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 then increases blood pressure in two ways. One is vasoconstriction which causes the blood vessels to constrict and causes the increase in blood pressure. Another way would be the secretion of aldosterone by the adrenal cortex. Aldosterone then causes an increase in the sodium reabsorption within the kidneys which is then followed by water and when this happens, there's going to be an increase in the blood volume. At the same time, there's going to be a decrease in the urinary output, which ultimately also causes the blood pressure to go up. Again, angiotensin II 
causes vasoconstriction, which causes the blood pressure to go up, and causes aldosterone secretion, which causes an increase in the sodium reabsorption, and water follows, and there will be an increase in the blood volume and a decrease in the urinary output at the same time, which causes the increase in blood pressure. So both actions of angiotensin II, which is vasoconstriction and aldosterone secretion, causes the blood pressure to go up. And that is our renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And that is it for today, guys. I hope you guys found that video helpful. Once again, hit the like and subscribe button. By doing that, our videos will go straight to you. And hit the notification bell so you guys get notified when we upload new videos. My name is Don Mint, signing out.